In the very first chapter of Isaiah, the prophet makes an indictment against the people of God. He says this, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before your eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. So God is telling his people, he says, your hands are filled with blood. <clears throat> I have all of these things against you. So I want you to turn. I want you to change. I want you to turn from the evil and do good. I want you to take care of the oppressed people, the fatherless, the widow, the people that have been downtrodden by, <clears throat> by the oppression that's taking place. And then the prophet issues an invitation. And it's a prophetic invitation, I believe, because of the way that he says it. And it's an invitation that absolutely goes out to the entire world. It always has. And it's going to until the Lord stops his time of offering grace to this world. And he says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. You see, this is what every human being needs to do. He needs to stop and reason with God. Stop and, and, and use your mind and think hard about who you are, how'd you get here, what's going on, what, where'd this world come from, um, why are things the way that they are, and what should the world be like? Is there a God, and if He's, if there is, then he's good, and, and what's he require of me? And so he says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, and though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This is a, uh, the reason I say that this invitation is prophetic. He's telling them, your sins are like this. They're, they're red, they're crimson, but they're going to be white. They shall be. You see, God knew what he was going to do. The people didn't know. They had a clue. They had some pieces and parts, but they didn't fully understand. But God knew what he was going to do. Much later, after the time of Isaiah, a man is going to appear down by the Jordan. He's going to be dressed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He's going to eat locusts and wild honey. He's going to have a wild eye look in his eye, and he's going to say, There he is. Behold, the Lamb of God, who what? Who takes away the sin of the world. You see, this prophetic invitation in the book of Isaiah for people to come to God is going to be fulfilled when Jesus Christ goes to the cross. He's the Lamb of God. He's going to take away the sin of the world. You know, the only thing that can wash you from your sins, the only thing that can take sin away is the blood of Jesus Christ. Any other kind of washing that you might do might clean things up for a minute. The Old Testament sacrifices the blood of animals covered sins for a year. They put them away for a little while. They kind of kind of appeased the wrath of God for a time, but they couldn't take sins away. But the blood of Jesus Christ, it takes away our sin. Do you know him today? Have you, have you come to the Lord Jesus Christ? I pray that you have. I pray that you have come to Jesus Christ to have your sins forgiven to have yourself cleaned and washed. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The only one who can do that is Jesus, but he will do that if you will come to him in faith. Come to him in repentance. Turn away from those evil things. Turn toward the Lord and put your faith in him. He will cleanse you. He will give you a new life. God bless you. Have a great day.